in this class uh, we will discuss about the corn clutches i will give a brief introduction and after that i will go straight away into the design of the corn clutch so as we have discussed corn clutch consists of a male corn as well as a female corn and male corn is represented here in the blue color and the green one is called as the uh, female corn and here uh, what happens is that we have a friction material lined on the surface of the male corn and when the male corn goes into the female corn then caging happens and the speed of both these uh, part will become similar e equal to one another so it consists of a female corn it consists of a male corn it has shaft friction material so the working mechanism is same only thing is that how the uh, friction material is being arranged what is the uh, criteria of arrangement or how it is being beneficial for the uh, application all those things are the most important thing okay so uh, when you when you uh, compare with the single plate clutch the working is pretty same because it pulls uh, back which is against the spring spring will store the energy as potential energy so when we release the pedal what happens the stored potential energy of the spring is being given to the male corn and the male corn will go into the female corn and they to rub against each other and finally the speed and the torque became same on both the sides of the clutch okay so this is the schematic diagram which is given here we have an outer corn we have an inner corn everything is given actuating spring everything is same there is no change along with us with this i need to add one more thing which is the hmm, these two things so this angle is called as 2 alpha where alpha is called as the semi corn angle semi corn angle and the range is usually 12 to 15 sometimes it can go up to 25 degree also that's all okay so uh, before we move forward we have to understand uh, we have to do some calculation because it's a very trigonometric relation which you require to find out the outer diameter and the inner diameter okay so let's say this is the uh, this is the mean diameter dm this is the outer diameter inner diameter and this is the outer diameter so definitely this angle is going to be alpha this angle is also going to be alpha okay now say let's let's draw some lines okay and if you look here i will say that this is going to be d in a, this is going to be d mean and this is going to be d outer okay i will say that i will draw one more line here okay okay now if you look here uh, we can say that uh, if you know the value of if you know the value of dm suppose if you know the value of dm how can we find the value of d in and d out to understand that you should call the width of the brake line that means this width that is being called as b so if that is b this has to be b by 2 and this has to be b by 2 okay anyway now let's say like this from the dm if i add some x here and an x here definitely uh, we will say that dm plus 2x is going to get the value of d out so dm plus 2x is going to get the value of d out similarly if i subtract this x and this x from dm i am going to get the value of d inner so d inner now the question is what is the value of x and so so very simple we just uh, use the basic trigonometric relations see if i take this as the uh, friction lining friction lining and this as b by 2 and this as alpha then this is called as the value of x okay so what will be sin alpha sin alpha is going to fetch the value of x divided by b by 2 and finally x is nothing but b by 2 sin alpha if you substitute this x is equal to b by 2 sin alpha here for d out and d in we can say that d out is equal to dm plus b sin alpha 
and d inner is equal to dm minus b sin alpha. It's a very simple thing. It's easy to understand. So this relation is not given in the data handbook. You have to manually do it. That's the reason why I have explained this. Okay. Now let's uh, move forward and see uh, how the design is being carried out. So the initial two steps are one of the same where you have to calculate the uh, torque transmitted and the diameter of the shaft. If you have any confusion in these two steps, kindly refer back to the design procedure for the single plate and multi plate clutch. Okay. And step number three is very important because that is a completely different step when compared to the previous design procedures. Here, we are not calculating dm based upon the uh, uniform wear condition or uniform pressure condition. Instead, we are going to assume the value of dm with the help of a ratio q. Okay, so let's say I will I will assume it as dm by b is equal to say 6. You have the freedom to uh, assume it from 4.5 to 8. So say I assume it for 6. So I will write dm as 6b. That is the important thing. Okay, now so right now we have the value of dm in terms of b. Let's move forward. And the step number 4 we are going to calculate the value of fa using this equation 13.10c axial force so here we have the value of uh, sin alpha pressure and uh, friction mu and p can be taken from the table this details about the table was also given in the previous design procedure so that same table is applicable for all the type of clutches okay so here uh, you have already you have taken the value of dm in terms of b if you substitute it here you are going to get the value of fa in terms of b square that's the only thing you are not going to get a solid value okay and from here if you move forward uh, uh, you, are, you are supposed to calculate the torque carrying capacity for that you can use this relation mu fa dm by 2 sin alpha fa you have already oh, it's already available okay so uh, or else you can use this equation also no problem okay so if you substitute it here dm square so dm is already in terms of b so square it's going to be in terms of it is going to be square one more b is there so if you multiply it it is going to be in terms of b cube okay solve and get the value of b right and this relation is given here d1 plus d2 by 2 this is not really used you can use this when you have the value of d1 and d out or d inner or d out okay so d1 means d inner d2 means d outer okay so once you get the value of b immediately after getting the value of b you find the value of d dm then you find the value of d1 and d2 using what dm plus or minus b sin alpha so dm plus b sin alpha will give you plus is going to give you the value of d1 minus is going to give you the value of d1 that is clear i think Okay, now uh, please do and also you have to calculate the value of Fa axial force required. So please don't stop with this. You have to do one more step, and that particular step, uh, that particular step consists of uh, the axial force required. So I will I will write this as step number six, which is the calculation of Fa dash. This is the axial force required for the Fa required for NKG. NKG. That is the most important thing. So that I have not added here. So I will show the equation in the data handbook. So this is the equation in the data handbook. Uh, equation 13.10 G. You can see FA dash. Okay. FA dash you have pi dm b p sin alpha mu cos alpha. Every value is available there with you. You kindly substitute it and get the value of FA dash. So that completes the step. So uh, after uh, the step number six, make sure that you have the value of B, you have the value of D1, D2, DM, FA, FN, torque, and finally FN. All these values should be there and you should rewrite this also. So that is the design procedure. It's a very simple design procedure. Only thing is that uh, the way in which we find the value of d1 and d2 is slightly different uh, and anyway you just follow this 
uh, write down these steps and try to solve some basic questions you will get the grip and after that we will move forward with the some complex type of questions so if you have any kind of doubt please don't feel bad to contact me you can always contact me you can inbox me uh, just inbox me i will help in all the possible ways i can uh, and kindly uh, watch the video if you have any doubt and if you find any kind of suggestions you can uh, write it to me thank you